Hello there, this is Rob with Virtual Flat, and today I have a reverse engineering exercise with advanced surfacing. So if you've been to the channel before, I have a video on reverse engineering, specifically a guitar, but that method was non-destructive because of course I don't want to destroy my guitar. But that leads me to think, what kind of stuff do we have available if we allow destruction into the equation? So. Please enjoy this video where I will be destroying a peep in order to reverse engineer it and then I will 3D print it at the very end. Alright, so here I have a box of marshmallow peeps. I've purchased this uh, for purely scientific purposes only and nothing else, I assure you. So if I want to reverse engineer one of these peeps, there's a couple of different ways to do it. So I've released a video on reverse engineering things without des without destroying them, which can be very tricky, but what you'll see is that we have a lot more options available to us if we allow destruction into the equation. All right, so looks like I got all my 10 peeps. No one trying to swindle me here. All right. So they come all nice and stuck together like this. Maybe that's something I can do when I 3D print these guys. But yeah, I picked this box out in particular because there's a lot of good samples in this one. So, let's see. Get a plate. Okay, there we go. Bring this row in here. And now I'm gonna pull this apart. All right, so I need to test how easily these things can be destroyed, so, excuse me one minute. Yep, all right, that's pretty soft, pretty easy to destroy. These things are a lot grosser than I remember them, to be honest with you. Uh, but anyway, sorry, Mr. Peep. I'll set you to the side here. You can watch. All right, so now I'll get this peep over here. And if I wanted to model something like this in SOLIDWORKS, it's actually a little bit tough to do. And that's because there's not really any hard edges available for us to, well, start off a sketch with. But we have, we always have these edges that we can take advantage of. Uh, advantage of. And for that, that is the silhouette edge at any orthographic uh, view. So I'm looking at a side profile like this, and now I can see a bit easier about what I would have to sketch or you know, use as a starting path. But to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna cut an actual edge into there. So anyone who is squeamish may want to look away right now, but I promise you this is for science. And there I have a pretty good cross section for the marshmallow. I'm actually pretty impressed how well this cut actually. And there you go. Yep, puff sugar uh, covered with crystallized sugar. Okay, so a couple things I notice here. So, of course, got our pointy tail and pointy beak, um, representing the start and end points of the nozzle that squirts the marshmallow. Yeah, the marshmallow curves up just a bit at the edge here. Curves up a bit and, you know, of course, meets this point. Over here, the base is actually quite flat. That's informational. And we seem to have a bit of an angle here as it comes back to the beak. And of course we just have a smooth curve back here. All right, I'll probably be referring to this throughout the modeling process, but yeah, Mr. Peep, you have served your purpose. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. All right, let's get into the modeling bit here. So in front of me is the finished product, of course, but we're not gonna start from here. We're gonna start from the very beginning. 
So I have a new part open up in the background. So as you can see, it just, it's just file new and what they give you at the beginning. And now if you want your part to match up exactly uh, just like mine, uh, you can pause the video for each of the sketch dimensions or um, you can find them in the description below. Um, but at any rate, the way I'm going to tackle uh, modeling a peep just like this one here is uh, I'm just going to start at the base. So the base, I'm going to plan to make a sweep. So not just any sweep, but uh, a sweep with guide curves. And that's going to give it its signature curves. So remember with sweeps, you have to draw the path first. So I'm going to start a sketch on the right plane. I'll draw a line from the origin stretching out rightward like this. So that's towards the back. And I'll give that a dimension of 2. And that's all this sketch needs. So I'll exit that sketch. And now I'm going to draw one of the guide curves. And the important thing, you want to draw the guide curve separate from the path curve. It's not the end of the world, but it's a little more annoying to work with. So I'm going to exit, start a new sketch on the right plane, and here we go. So for this one, it's going to be a three-point arc, just like this. And I'm going to make the ends of the arc vertical to the ends of the path, like that. Get my dimension tool, and I will dimension the end of this to be quarter of an inch and it gets a little thinner towards the end so I'll make that 150 thousandths and uh, for this I want to dimension the maximum height of this and a good way to do this without having to draw a center line uh, grab this line here so I just click that hold down shift and when you hold down shift it tells SOLIDWORKS that you want to measure to the tangency of the arc rather than uh, to the center point 0.375 and that should fully define it. Yeah, making sure things are fully defined or it's just good for things not to move around. So there's one of my guide curves. I'm going to draw another guide curve for the side, how the, how the side swoops in. And I'll draw this on the tr top plane, so start a sketch on the top plane. And this will be a partial ellipse. And now these partial ellipses can be a little bit difficult to deal with sometimes. But remember, um, first click is the center, second click is a major axis. The third click is the minor axis and the start point. And the last click over here ends the arc. So you can just click a couple of times if you want to just get an arbitrary one. And remember, you can use those relations afterwards. So I get something like this. And I'll say that I want the center point of the ellipse, the major axis, and the origin to be all vertical to each other, like that. I want this thing to be horizontal, so lining this up. The end of this, I would like to have this meet up with the major axis point, just like that. And after that, it's just a couple of dimensions to kind of describe the extremity of the curvature. So half an inch there. And I want to make that three quarters of an inch and should just need one more dimension which is uh, the top of this to one of these points over here. And sometimes you have to um, kind of rotate this out of plane. Make that a quarter of an inch. That should be fully defined as well as it is. And there's your final sketch. Right, we can exit our sketch. We're almost ready to sweep, except we don't have the profile yet. So the profile should be perpendicular to the path and should be right at the end. And front plane fits the bill just perfectly. So sketching on the front plane, I will get a regular ellipse this time. Grab the ellipse. Place one point out for the center, major, and then minor axis. And notice that I draw it out to the side here because I want a Pierce relation rather than a coincidence. So remember, coincidence happens if you grab two points 
and you just get that relation there. We've all seen it before, but instead, grab this point, and instead of this end point, grab the line itself, and you get Pierce. And the short explanation is Pierce is a much stronger, more specific relationship than coincident. And it helps prevent errors for these things. So um, I just applied that to the major axis point, and I'll rinse and repeat for the minor axis point. So again, point in the active sketch, hold down control, and then grab the path of the inactive sketch, make Pierce. So you can see without any dimensions, this is fully defined because I've told SOLIDWORKS, hey, you're going to be driven by the position of these lines. And that should be it for our skeleton. So you may notice, hey, that, that thing's a little bit too long. Isn't that going to mess things up a little bit? Well, not really, because when we use the sweep command, you'll see that the profile does not go past the sweep, pretty much. So I'm going to launch the sweep command from the features tab, sketch profile, I'll grab the ellipse, the path will be this straight line, and at first we'll get this very boring shape, but then we'll mix it up by going into the guide curves, and then clicking on those two sketches, and as you can see, even though this extends out, uh, the uh, yeah, it, it works just fine. It doesn't confuse SOLIDWORKS in the least bit. So I can go ahead and hit OK there. And there's our first initial bit of geometry. And if you want, you can change the color here. So I'll just do that real quick. So right-clicking on the top line item, hitting the beach ball, and then that first thing in the drop-down. And I'll just make that... Let's make a blue one, sure. Why not? So there's a blue one. So this is an interesting shape, to be sure, but it is not very close to that of the peep shape. And the main thing is, well, peeps are not perfectly flat or on either ends, and also, aren't they a little bit flat on the bottom? And yes, this is true, but the most important thing with SOLIDWORKS is that you don't overwhelm yourself with trying to do all of the geometry in one feature, in all one fell swoop. It might seem like you're being efficient, and you know if you can make it work, go for it. But if you find that it's not working, it's time to break that down into a little bit. So, um, yeah, I just have this middle part, but what, I, what can I do to make the ends, well, you know, not completely flat? Well, I'm going to get the help of a surfacing tool here. So I'm going to go to my Surfaces tab and launch my Delete Face. And you'll know that Delete Face is pretty fun because um, there's this Delete and Fill option. So I'll set it to Delete and Fill with the Tangent Fill option checked. Click one of these faces and let's see how that looks. Perfect. I like that. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. So select that end face, delete and fill, tangent fill. Get something like this. You see this is a little bit sharper because, well, the arc actually tapers down a little bit further here. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. All right, now for the flat bottom. Uh, there's plenty of ways to do this, but I will create a new plane. And I'll do this the shortcut way. So I'm going to grab the top plane because I want my new plane to be parallel to that. Hold down Control, click, and drag. When you do that, it gets you a new plane. And from there, I'll just say that's going to be uh, it's going to be a tenth of an inch from the top plane. So I'm going to cut down, cut out this bottom bit here. Hit OK. All right. So now, how do I cut with this? So again, a handful of ways, but the easiest way, I will use the cut with surface command found in surfaces. Um, the arrow wants to eat the material away, so this is pointing the right direction. Hit OK, and now we have a flat bottom for our peep. Yeah, and that's the bottom for the most part there. Just a little bit at a time. So, next thing we should work on here. So, I got the bottom. Well, at least most of it. I'll edit it a little bit later, but now let's just kind of uh, work our way up with this transition section. And for that, I have a loft planned for us. So with this loft, I'll go ahead and start 
a sketch on the top plane. I may need to change that later, but this should be fine. Um, I'm going to use a couple of ellipses uh, because I want one side to move independently from the other, and you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. But I'm just going to get my partial ellipse tool, and I'll just draw it off to the side. And that's a good tip, you know, if you are afraid that you might pick up a relationship you don't want by accident here, you can just draw things off to the side and then rest assured that you actually have a bit of a chance to deal with them. So there's my first partial ellipse. I'll go ahead and get another one here. Just like that. And I'll adjust. Alright, so I want these this point to match up here as well as this one. I want the two center points of them to merge together. And that's perfect. I want those to be coincident. I want those to merge as well. And now we should have this egg shape where I have this side that I can control independent from uh, this side, which is Oh, there you go. So it gives me the ability to make an egg shape is basically what I want here. So grabbing one of the uh, major axis points, the center point, and the horizontal, I will specify that to be vertical. All right, so that's getting closer. I just need to add a couple of dimensions now. And I will add a dimension for the major axis of the bottom thing here. Oops, don't want to move that. Get my dimension tool. Major axis of the top one. And I'll adjust these here in just a second. So I want to make sure I got all my ducks in a row. And I'll just put an offset distance from the center point and then the width. And now I'll start tacking some dimensions. And you can see when all of those are in there, I get a fully defined sketch. So this needs to be 0.75. And I make this 0.75 as well. So you may be wondering, well, why don't you just make the um, axis point here coincident to the origin? And yeah, I could, but this is a result of my testing. Because I started with this shape and I was just kind of stretching out the shape a little bit and just seeing how it worked. So I found that this worked best for me or some, it gave me the result that I liked the most. All right, and there we have something like that. Exit that sketch. And now to loft, I, well, I need another profile. So I'll get myself another plane first and foremost. So I will drag an extra plane from plane 1 making plane 2 and I'll make that one inch of offset here with that. Alright, this is looking pretty good and now I need uh, basically the exact same sketch on this top plane and yeah it was a little bit annoying to draw so I'd rather not do it from scratch so I'm just gonna copy and paste so take sketch 5 here which has the sketch entities Control C, and then click on plane 2. So you got to pre select where you want the sketch to live. Control V. There you go, copy and paste. So now I can edit that. Alright, so it looks like it may have lost its little thing there, and that's fine. So I just needed the vertical back. So basically lost all the relations to the origin. That's fine. That's a, still a lot less work than I had before. So now these dimensions, that will turn into 550. That will turn into 1.3. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's this one that turns into 1.3. Misread my notes here. This one, 450. And that goes down to 0.875. Okay, and that looks accurate to me. So there's a there's yet another sketch. 
All right, so there's our two things here. And now you may be thinking, well, yeah, let's go ahead and loft now. But to that I will say not so fast. And that's because um, I'd like to put some guide curves on this too, making this a little extra fancy. I'm going to hide that sketch, uh, hide that plane, excuse me, because that's in my way. I will, I will draw on the right plane. And on the left-hand side, I will draw a straight line. On the right, an arc, like that. So to lock things in place, I will use the Pierce relation four times, basically end point of the line, hold down control, the inactive sketch and hit pierce. That will lock it in the one and only one solution point there, which is the kind of precision that we need. This is a peep after all. So grabbing the ends of the arc like that, make pierce. You see that we're still underdefined because of the blue geometry. In my click and drag, this thing does not know its radius. So I gave this a radius of one inch and I liked how that turned out. All right, and now we're actually ready to execute the sweep. Uh, the, the loft, excuse me. So I'm going to my features and get my lofted boss base. Sweep from here to, why do I keep saying sweep? Loft from here to there. Guide curves, select one. And this is what happens if you draw multiple guide curves on the same sketch. So it just says, hey, is this the thing you want to use? Just hit this little check mark to say, yes, that is the thing that I want to use as well. Click the line, hit check again, and that is looking super. I like that. Hit OK. All right, getting a little bit closer. All right, and now to make the chick's head, uh, I find that the dome tool worked pretty well for this. So the dome tool is usually not found in any of the tabs, so I'll go to my command search and type in dome and select dome from right there and this tool is really neat because you just pick a face and it just bulges it out for you a little bit but uh, it needs to be adjusted a bit I'm going to uncheck continuous dome because I want the edges to flare out like that which may not seem like the smoothest thing but I'll deal with that later I'll give that a height of 0.3 inches like that All right, and this is looking pretty good. So he's got his head for the most part, but, but of course, um, a peep needs a beak. And for, for that, I will actually use surfaces. And yeah, basically, I'm going to delete this face and then use a lofted surface to, uh, or a boundary surface. Either one will, should work, pretty much. Uh, to make our beak. But the problem is the surfacing tool only works well if you have very nice clean edges and as you can see here we have kind of these sad broken edges. So I'm going to take a moment to fix that. I'm just going to draw on the top plane or you can draw uh, on any parallel plane really. Get myself a straight line like that. I want it to be horizontal if I can get it. Yep, there it is. And I'll say from that point, you will be 5 thousandths of an inch. So just enough to uh, basically cut a bit extra. And because I like my sketches fully defined, just so I don't get any false alarms, yeah, really this only needs to be larger than the face, but what I'll do is get the midpoint, put it vertical, and then with smart dimension, I put two inches there. So fully defined, definitely longer than the head. And now that I have this sketch, I will use a split line to split this face up into a couple of bits. So, oh, I'm sorry, I may have done that a little quick. So going back, basically launch, launch into split line, put the line sketch into this pink box, and then this face over here for this blue one. Shouldn't give you any complications. But from that, you will have this very thin ribbony face, and then this other face here. And now to open this up to make it into a surface model, I will use my delete face command again. So surfaces delete face, but instead of delete and fill, I'll just opt for my regular 
delete. So when I do that, it turns it into a hollow surface model. So there's the bottom of the model as seen from the inside, like that. All right, so in order to create this beak here, um, I, I will actually sketch a point for me to loft to, or, or boundary. It's whatever floats your boat. They're very similar. Same, same, but different, as I like to say. So a sketch on the right plane. I will place a point right here. And I'll get my dimension, and I'll say that is, at least for me, what worked pretty well. Point 0.1 in there, and from there to there, three quarters of an inch. So there's going to be the tip of our beak. Exit my sketch, and I should have all the stuff that I need. So again, it's going to be tempting to just kind of loft this entire opening to the point, but I found that it's just a little too much for it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get my boundary surface. And I'll pick that as my first thing. Pick the point as my next. And, yep, that's looking a little too sharp. So instead of leaving this flag over here as none, I will say tangency to face. And I should be thinking of it. Let me see here. Tangency to face. Oh, there it is. Tangency to face, and I like the way that looks. So hit OK. So we're getting there, except, um, yeah, we're not quite done yet. Yeah, so as you can see, there's still an open boundary here. So I'll use another boundary surface. Pick that as my first bound. Hit my selection manager, and grab that as my next bound and you should get something like this hit OK and that is looking pretty good except this is not a solid it's just a collection of three surface bodies so in order to fix that I'll get my knit surface pick the three surfaces and knit them together and don't be a doofus like me and forget to hit create solid there we go solid bodies one so we were successful here. So that's the general peep shape there, except you may notice at this point, well, it's looking pretty angular and not really marshmallowy. So I'm going to use a handful more uh, boundary surfaces. I'm going to cut out these sharp transitions and then replace them with some nice smooth boundary transitions. So first thing, I need to cut away kind of this middle portion. So I'm going to sketch on the right plane here. And this can take a, you know, can take this with a bit of artistry, but um, if you want to follow exact, I will be putting dimensions on these. But basically, I want two arcs, one drawn kind of like this, and the other kind of like this. So um, as you can see on the front, the two arcs are very far apart, meaning that the boundary surface will have a lot of time to transition and will make that extra smooth. Um, this is contrasted to the um, other side here, where it's, they're very close to each other, giving a very short transition period for that boundary surface to complete, so it'll be a much sharper corner. But that's the aesthetic that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and fully dimension this. might take me just a second here. But that's just if you want to have yours exactly like mine. So I'll grab the ends of that. So I just drew a center line starting from this point down here to lock it one way. This I made vertical to the origin like that. So that I made vertical to the beak, just to kind of hold it in place there. And I think it's just time for some dimensions. So this end, I believe I gave 280. From here to the origin, actually, 160. And from there to the origin, 
two. This point eight. And I think all we need now is some radii. Two point six two five for that, and for this eight point three seven five. All right, so now that's fully defined. So now if you're following along at home, that should be it there. And with this, I will uh, get my split line. So that's a common technique I like to use. You use a split line to split a couple of these faces with the sketch, then use the delete face command to blast open a hole that I can then patch. So I'll do that here. Delete face, where are you? There it is. Just leave it on regular delete here. You get something like that. Go to my boundary, and I'll say I want to connect that with that. Whoops, I tried to go normal too, but I didn't pre select the plane, so I'll just use the triad to do that. So I'm just going to scoot these uh, green dots over to the very edge so that they're in line with each other. And I will make this, let's see, let's try tangency. So there's that. And I'll do that for the other side as well, tangency. And I think that should be it, yes. And there you go, that is nice and smooth, at least for um, this part over here. So I'll actually do a similar uh, operation for the head area as well. So sketch on the right plane and yeah, two arcs again. So one from here to just about there, one from here to just about there. Yeah, except I'm gonna need an extra edge around here because I'm gonna patch it with two boundary surfaces. So I'm gonna use my split entities command and click right here. And now you see my arc is broken up into two. And that's exactly what I want. So again, all you need if you just want to get a peep of some shape is something like this. Just make sure the arc goes over this line and this arc goes completely under this. So don't have it cross like that. That's going to be bad. Leave it like that. But I will fully define it here as well if you want to follow along at home. So again, I'm just going to draw a center line here make all these things well, not symmetric but coincident like that and I believe I put another center line over here just to kinda hold this in place on the other ends of the arcs so from the distance from the origin three quarters of an inch so I get something like that. Whoops. So now, yeah, I can connect that up with the very end there. All right, so now I have a little, two little bridges to two center lines. So let's see what I can do with these dimensions. So dimension, the overall length of that, and this time it is to the bottom, so I guess I should give myself a slap on the wrist for inconsistency but this should work just fine. I think I made this point nine eight seven five. So they're pretty close to each other. And this I can just snap to the end there and give that an overall length of 1.125. That with there, 0.75. And at this point, this needs a radius. 0.85, that's fully defined. This needs a radius. And I made this 3.5. That's looking good. Except now we have this kind of loose point. So here I made the arc length uh, 3.5, or 0.35, excuse me. And the way you get that, get your smart dimension tool, pick the arc, pick the endpoint, and then pick its other endpoint 
and you'll get an arc length. 0.35, and that should fully define it. All right, spectacular. I'll exit that and do another split line. And of course, I could have rolled this in with the other features, but I was just kind of doing it one step at a time, but you can roll them together if you want. Don't see any harm in that. So yeah, now you can see these are the faces we have to get rid of, and now we'll get rid of that bump back there. Yeah, don't forget to pick the face on the other side to split as well, because we need to um, delete these ones here. All right, so delete face, and again, just their regular delete flavor will do. Should be six faces. Yeah, and now we have something like that, and you notice when I hover over the edge, it's separate from this part, and that's because I put that um, split entity there. As soon as I did that, that's what tells SOLIDWORKS to split up the edge, and it makes it a lot more easier and manageable to um, take care of. So before I connect this up together, I'll give the this uh, beak here a little fillet, and the best fillet I found for this was the um, face fillet. So the top face will be this blue one, and the pink ones will be these ones down here. And this one I just put a very small value. So 0, 1, 2, 5. Yeah, just to kind of break the edge, just a, just a hair. All right, and at that point, now I can start closing things up a little bit with a boundary surface. Selection Manager. So I'll grab these three edges here and then hit OK to that selection. All right, and my other selection will be here. Can make one side tangency to face, the other side tangency, getting that smoothness in there. There we go, very nice. And now to close this up, get my boundary surface again. Yeah, you'll see a common theme here. Selection Manager, get that edge with this edge, and this, whoops, missed my click there, like that, but just to make sure, hugs the edges tightly, I'll go into Direction 2 and put these purple faces. So, the one right underneath the peep's chin you want to leave as none, there's going to be no uh, smoothness there. But this can be tangency, this can be tangency, uh, discrepancy will be propagated, I think that's fine. I might say the same thing here as well. Alright, now that's fine. It's looking good. Alright, and now we have something like this, can knit it all together. So knit surface. I'll pick all of these. Should recognize that we can create a solid from this. Hit OK. And we're back to one solid body. So you might be inclined to think that we're almost done at this point, but we need to make its tail. And to do that, we're going to set up a loft, but this one will be a special loft a centerline loft. So I'll start a sketch on the right plane and draw myself a three-point arc like so. And time to slap some dimensions on this. So I put 1.925. This one I put 2.175 like that. Should require just two more pieces of information, just a radius, and then the height of this arc, 0.375. There we go. Soon our tail will be there. I'll sketch on the top plane, and on the top plane I will draw myself a circle, 
and that circle will be a quarter of an inch, 0.25 in diameter. Then get the center point, hold down control, hit the path, and hit make pierce. Just like that. And then you can exit that sketch, have something like that. And I'm going to loft to a point, so I'm going to go to reference geometry point, and just make that my top selection, my point, so point one. And oop, it disappeared, so that means I must have this unchecked. Yep, I need to check on view points. There it is. All right, at this point, I'll get my regular loft. So the profiles will be the circle with the point, and you can see, yeah, look how pointy it is. It's almost a little too pointy. So I will go to centerline parameters and insert that arc. So just to give that a little bit of a bend. All right, we can hide the point now, but the tail isn't very smooth. So just to take care of that, I'll do a fillet. So I can click on this edge and say fill it, and I'll put a quarter of an inch, so, uh, not a quarter, an eighth of an inch, excuse me, 0.125 inches, and it'll get me something like that. So yeah, it looks a little bit patchy, but you'll see here in a sec, yeah, it looks not too bad. Alright, so the last step here is the peep's eyes. And I do that with a wrap feature, pretty much. So to set up for the wrap, you need a sketch, of which I will make one on the top plane here. So I'll start off with two circles, like that. Box them, make them equal. Draw a center line between them, like that. Grab the midpoint, and say that is vertical to the origin, and now that kind of makes, makes them symmetric. The eyes I put a tenth of an inch. The spacing I got away with 0.6 and I like the way that looked. Very cute and derpy. And the length of the line itself, or the distance of the line, I just put as 1.2. Just like that. So there's the, well, the soon-to-be eyes. So I'll get that, and I'll say Wrap. And for now, I'm just going to select Scribe, and then Wrap Method Spline Surface. And if I click this, there's my eyes. I just leave it on low, low accuracy. All right, so if you just want to, I guess, render it or take a screenshot, I can right-click on Wrap here, go to Appearances, um, Select the wrap feature, change this to black. Oh, that might be a little too much. Yeah, let me change that to face. Yeah, I guess it counts every affected face there. So yeah, if you just want to take a little screenshot, send it around. There you go, there's your little peep. But um, I wanted to 3D print this on my Cindo printer, which can print two colors at one time. And for that, you need multiple bodies. So here's how you will accomplish something like that. So let me turn off the black eyes. So let me go to Appearances, Remove Appearance, just to make this next bit easier. So, yeah, to make the eyes separate, instead of just a scribe there, and then have eyes in there, uh, I will go to my surfaces, go to offset surface, and change the value to zero. This causes the tool to become copy surface, and then I will click the two eyes. So if I hide this main body away, we have two surface bodies that are just the eyes. And now with these eyes, I will just thicken them individually. A tenth of an inch is just fine. Make sure merge result is turned off. We need these to be separate. So thicken again. Merge result turned off towards the inside. Like that. And just to see what's going on, I will take these two thicken bodies and assign them to be black. Body. Make those black. 
there we go. So if I unhide this, so you can see there's a little bit of like almost like usually it's a checkerboard pattern, but it's the underlying surface peaking uh, from behind the body, and we don't want that. So my new favorite tool as of right now, especially with the new printer, is that if I want to make a perfectly eye-shaped cavity and then leave the eye in there, I found that indent is fantastic for that. So I'll launch the indent command. I'll check this cut option here, so that's going to be important. Target body will be the blue body here. And the tool body region, let me go ahead and hide that so I can actually select easier. I'll just click these two items here. Then I'll reshow that. So yeah, it looks identical except there's like no blue peeking through, but if I hide the eye, oop, is that what I meant? If I hide one of the eyes, it's a little strange. There we go. So yeah, now you can see there is a eye-shaped cavity in there. So now I can send this over, you know, make an STL, which I'll show you how to do in a sec. But this is just for a singleton peep. What if you want a row of them? So if you want something like this, and yeah, let me hit save. Yeah, I did all of that without saving, which is a little scary. Yeah, always remember to save, children. But yeah, I'm going to linear pattern. And I'll select the right plane as the direction, make a body pattern. Make sure you select all three bodies, the body and the two eyes. And I found that a distance of 1.2 worked really, really well. They're just intersecting with each other, so they exhibit, the, exhibit that classic peep stuck together look. Hit save. And that's the peep for the most part. So keep watching the next part if you're wondering how I exported it to the printer, but if all I wanted is a row of peeps. There you go. Okay, so let's say we do want to send this to my printer. I'll right click on the solid bodies folder, say save bodies. Alright, and now I have to assign a name to each of these bodies, but I don't feel like doing that, so I'll just do auto assign names. That'll put the name of the body as their names. You know, it's a little bit generic, but I make sure that I'm working in a separate folder than everything else. Yeah, but before I hit OK, I'll say Create Assembly. And I will say Video Peep ASM. Like that. And then I'll hit OK. And now we'll sit back and relax as it makes my assembly for me. All right, so I think it's finished here. I'm going to save once more, but then go to File, Open Recent, Video Peep. Yeah, none of the visual properties propagated, but that's fine. At this point, I'll go to File, Save As, STL, and we'll save out all 15 bodies. And just like that, it should be done. So now how, how do we get them to print? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get my slicing software up. 3D Walks desktop. All right, it's on my other monitor. I'll pull it over in a second. But I'm first going to open up the window, uh, the file location of this whole thing here. So I'll do um, Control Tab and then say Show in Folder. And it just brings this in for me. And there's my slicing software. So I'll select all 15 bodies here and just kind of click and drag them in there. Extremely small, maybe in inches. I say no to these because, yeah, the eyes are going to be really small, but you don't want the software to automatically scale. No, no. No means no. Alright, so there's all of our eyes and our peeps. So now all I have to do is hold down control and select all of these. 
And once I do, I can right click and say merge objects. Yeah, I know, a bit of a, a pain, but it's not too bad. Yep, I have just one object. Like that. And yeah, let me rotate this by 90, but you know, there's no definition of the eyes. And to fix that, go to my uh, object count thing, and I'll say change all the eyes to cartridge 2. Yeah, let me make this window a little bit bigger. There we go. So that's an eye, that's an eye. That should be the last one here. Yep, that looks pretty good. But what if you want the, the singleton peep? Yeah, so there's our row. So this is why I exported it as an entire assembly. It automatically uh, puts the spacing as I had it in SOLIDWORKS, which is really nice. But if I wanted the singleton peep, I'm just going to look through my bodies. The one that doesn't have L pattern, but indent 1, thicken 1, thicken 2. I know all of those go together. I'll click and drag and say no to the conversion question. Merge, grab that, rotate 90 degrees. And then for object two, there you go. And that's a singleton peep. All right, let's see how the G code looks. If I put something like this, and go to the layer viewer. All right, nine hours. So, yeah, let's save out this G code and see how it runs.